Welcome to Entertalk Media's Changing Stage Show. My name is Florentino. I'm shamelessly the CEO as well as the host of the Changing Stage. We've got 19 programs on the network, which you folks already know because you're obviously watching on our channel. But uh, with that said, today we are at the NAMM Show 2020. And this is an amazing day for us because we're going to be talking to some of the top leaders in the music industry about the big picture, about what's going on, uh, what are some of the challenges, what are some of the solutions, and you know what can you see for 2020. So let's just jump right into it. We've got Don Lombardi here, a great man, innovator, started off as a school and became a juggernaut in the percussion world with multiple products. He's the founder of DW Drum Workshop. Uh, you guys ended up picking up LP and we'll kind of go, actually we'll, we'll veer a little bit. You guys just picked up uh, Slingerland. Slingerland, brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brand, brand new. Brand, brand new. So you're going to be, we're, you know, I, we, well, I don't know if we're the first ones, but you're making the big announcement tonight yes. at, at 615. So stay tuned to their channel for that for sure. And just a, 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 an innovator for the, the industry, how you've approached marketing, how you've approached creation. John Good gave us a tour not too long ago and it was just a beautiful setup you have over there. So I uh, appreciate you being on here. Thank you, thank you. I've got to say before we get started, I'm here with the host with the most. This guy <laughs> has got an amazing array of videos that you guys have to watch out there, which has a lot to do about the industry too. Well, so someday I should be interviewing you. you I'm you, here, you, man. You've got, you got a great history. <laughs> Anytime you, you, you want to, man, I'm here for yeah. you. So uh, kind of with that said, let's talk about the industry. The big picture, where do you think the state of the industry is? Let's just, let's focus a bit more on the MI channel for the moment. So where do you think right now we are as in comparison before? Well, obviously technology has changed everybody's life. Yeah. Uh, and it's going to be happening even faster, I think, in yeah. the next few years. I look at my generation, uh, I look at my grandkids now, my son's generation, yeah. uh, all the things that have changed in terms of the way we would come to the NAM show and present our products, which would be the, the evolution of your new products every year, yeah, people yeah. would come to see it. Uh, with social media, they're seeing it within hours after you come out with it. Or minutes if you're or, doing or, a live stream. Or, or, like, or yeah. By the way, yes, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I think that it's having an effect on the end user, the consumer, and on the manufacturer. Um, the people in the middle, the supply chain itself, you yeah. know, I think they're reacting to that because they're having to keep up with technology more. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, you know, taking it from an educational standpoint, having a private instructor, being able to walk into a store and, and see a product and feel it or something yeah. is, is, is still a very important part of a musician's life. That's why we're here with all these retailers, right? Yeah, exactly right. So that's, so I, so I think over a period of years, we've all seen kind of an evolution yeah. of how things have changed. The question is, the state of the industry and the health of the industry is how well we can keep up with that. Yeah, yeah. Because it's happening around us, we just have to grasp it and, and understand it, and in some cases, lead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with that said, um, one of the big questions, I really want to dive into this. You guys have been such innovators. You guys are, and that, I mean, if you just join the show, DW has really set some standards on how business has to be practiced today. What are you guys doing for today, 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 and then for the future. What are some of the things you are, you're implementing to make a difference in, the, in this world? And I know one of them is my personal favorite is the drum channel. Yeah, education is a huge part of yeah. what's happening. I, I really feel that when I started out with, with, with getting into manufacturing, having a teaching studio yeah. for seven, eight years, which is what Drum Workshop was originally, yeah, yeah. Uh, workshop meaning classes, um, it was really important for me to to look at the world where it was at that point, where I was in my garage competing with these huge companies, yeah. um, I had no choice but to do things that were different because if I did the same thing, it would make no impact. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had no choice but for having it to be more expensive because we were making it in America, which is a very important thing to me. Yeah. Um, the drum set being an American invention in the first place. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we look back at us getting into starting to make pedals first in the early 1980s, 78, 79, Camco? into the 80s. It was the Campco dies and mold that yeah. I purchased. I never purchased the name Campco, yeah, yeah. but uh, one of my students, father, owned the Campco company. Okay. He came to pick up his student one day, yeah, yeah, yeah. his son, my student, and uh, said he had the opportunity to become president of Roland's U.S. and did he wanted to sell all this old dies and molds because 
Hoshino Company, Tamil, yeah. wasn't interested in that. But and our history is well known. We could go on and on about that. <laughs> but, but basically, it got me inspired into looking at the, the manufacturing side of my life, which I thought would be a hobby at the beginning. Yeah. But yeah. Um, on your question, I think you know what we had to do back in those days is what I tell everybody in the company that we still have to do today. Even though I go out there and we have many more employees than you know I ever thought I would have, yeah. um, it still feels like a small group and a small family vibe. Um, you even have an ice cream social every so often. We absolutely do. You know that. Were you there when we had it? <laughs> I didn't make the last one, oh, but okay. yeah, no, yeah no I've heard question. great things. No question we do that. Uh, and being innovative is, is a real key, you know. Yeah. Um, in the world today, we have things that we're showing in the booth that are new to us, yeah. um, but not necessarily revolutionary inventions. And we have some revolutionary inventions that we have patented. And those are the things that I think, you know, as, as a... I've heard this word used in, in many years, entrepreneur. I don't know if I was an entrepreneur, whatever I was doing. Oh, I, would, I, would, I, was, I would say I, I, one of the best ones that I can I, think I, of. Well, thank you. I guess you, you fit that definition over a period of years. Passion, commitment, and focus, and you have all of that. Yeah, and as, as does every drummer, by the way. Oh, yes. If, if you're going to become a good drummer, that's where education is so much an integral part of, of all of our lives. Because yeah. making something that inspires a drummer to play is, you know, it, it, it has our name on it, yeah. I feel, you know, uh, and you're dealing with other drummers who are friends and you're, you're, you're trying to improve the quality of their life. Yep. At the same time, you have to stay in business, so you got to be sure that you're financially, you know, solve it in order to do that. So we have some unique things here at the show today. Um, piccolo snare drum is not unique. Other people no. have had piccolo snare drums. Um, it is unique that we're making it out of a space age carbon fiber, which nobody else is using. We get from an American company. Yeah, you guys but, are known for the materials that you use that are, are affects very the sound yeah. of it. But but more unique is solving a problem. Um, every lug that appears on a shallow snare drum, yeah. like a piccolo snare drum, you can't have the receiver move. It's yeah. more of a tube lug. So we figured a way. It's a magic trick when you actually look at the drum. Um, to, in order to have a very small round lug with two tube receivers inside that uh, that, that adjusts, so it solves the stripping problem, yeah. makes it easier to tune. Yeah, yeah. So so those are finding a solution to something. Uh, there's a, a world of cajones out there. Yes. Um, Ten years ago, I patented a concept, and we finally got it to work. You have a concept in your head sometimes, and you think nobody's ever done this, mm -hmm. and then you try and see how you can actually manufacture it. Um, not until we had our own cajon factory down the street was I able to perfect it, but it's got a head surface that you play that is made out of different thicknesses of wood. We make things out of wood, as you know, yeah. as you know, all day long, but they're round. So I've never been able to make something rectangular out of wood before. So now that we're able to make a cajon, we can experiment with all different sound faces. Yeah. And it's the first cajon that allows you to have three different distinct sounds within the front face row. So those kinds of things, when players play it and they, they light up, yeah. that's uh, to me, that's what makes it exciting to go to work every day yeah. uh, and see what we can do next. And most of the things we get are fed from the musicians, fed from the artists that we have. Uh, can you do this? Can you do that? I want to see this. Now, you guys have a huge online presence. Let's kind of talk about that. Sure. I know that you're working with, you know, like uh, uh, JR and Danny and JR Rob I should clarify. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. JR Robinson, and Danny Seraphine, John Paris, all good friends. Sure. You get that input. What about the, how are you getting the input from the, the, the guy that's in the club or, or the, the kid that is just starting out? Are you guys capturing that through the internet? What, what's the, that technique? Yeah, I mean, socially we do, yeah. I mean, obviously the hugest percentage of people that are purchasing our products are not professional drummers. Yeah. They're the weekend drummer, they're the amateur drummer, they're the aspiring drummer, they're the student. Yeah. Uh, and they, being a working drummer and making a living, supporting a family yeah. for 20 years before I got into manufacturing, uh, very much in tune with what they're looking for and what yeah. problems they need to solve. At the, I'm going to the gig. I got older. I don't know how the heck that happened, but it did. I, you know, I, I woke up one day and I thought, I need lighter weight hardware. You know, yeah. so even though we had lightweight hardware, we now have ultra lightweight hardware. Yeah. So you solve a lot of problems that you think you might have, or you hear problems, that, and if you can solve a problem that a drummer doesn't even know he has, yeah, that's a real win. Um, yeah. When we made the first double pedal, which I had a patent on that was functional, um, that opened up the door. I said at one point back in 1984, I think it was in a Modern Drummer interview, that I thought it would be an average part 
of an average drummer's drum set. Yeah, yeah. Kids are starting out learning now with double pedals as part of their drum set. So, and then the evolution was we started obviously making pedals and, and stands. Then we got into drums in the later 80s. It wasn't until 1990 when we actually started looking at ourselves as coming to the NAM show here as a drum company, where we were actually trying to sell drums to dealers. And that was a huge surprising success for me. I mean, it was just my lack of business experience probably is why I was so surprised, but we had built a brand for 10 years with pedals. Well, I think it's good because you don't know that you, you can't do that, yeah, so exactly. you just go out and do it, right? Yeah, exactly right, exactly right. <laughs> Entrepreneurial, yeah. that's what you know. Yeah. You know, that's the, probably one of the key ingredients is I don't know that I can't do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Yeah, well, that was, and as a business model, if you look back uh, in history, back in uh, the late 70s, early 80s, Slinger and Ludwig and Rogers were all having a hard time and being purchased by yeah. other companies. Yeah. And so here I am going to the bank trying to borrow money to say, I want to be a new American drum company against foreign competition yeah. and against all the other American drum companies that haven't been able to be successful at the moment. So yeah, but you just, challenges. you don't even, you just, I, I never had a thought, somebody asked me this recently, I never thought about my answer until I just spurted it out. I never thought of us not being successful. I just, the first pedal I made, uh, Hank Belson picked it up, Louie's brother who was teching yeah. for him, and, and, I, and I, I had met Louie socially on a couple of occasions yeah. but didn't know him, and I get a call the same afternoon that Louie gets on, this is the best pedal I've ever played. And to me, I was a success. For many years, our accountant did not agree with me. <laughs> took several years to to convince them to convince them that I was successful. I, th yeah. I think you've, you've progressed a little bit now. Yeah, but, but fortunately, we're we're going down the road. And I'm blessed that my son is, you know, is so gifted. Uh, I have a grandson now in the business. I have a daughter in the business. Wow. So, but Chris is blazing the trail. As the company grows, you find that you spend a lot of your time not doing the things that got you there. Yeah because there's regulations, there's all, a whole bunch of things that have to do with just running a business, no matter what the business is. Yeah. And he enjoys that challenge. And seeing what the changes are in the MI world and how we can react to that as a manufacturer yeah. to, help, to help everybody out there in the industry, the online sellers and the brick and mortar stores too. But we, we did say, John and I, at one point, that this is the amount of drums we can make. It was about 15 years ago. But we were making more and more drums every month to grow yeah. and to fill the demand. We got to a point where it's like, if we make any more than this, we're not going to be able to see every kit that goes out of here. We're not going to have the quality. Yeah, you're not going to have the, the so, same passion. So, so we, we capped our production, and it's been there for this long period of time. But you have to grow because your expenses keep going up. Yeah. So it was kind of a no-brainer as to what we would make next, because all we know is drums. <laughs> so we came out with the PDP line, which is 20 years ago, believe it or not. It, was, it started very small 20 years ago as a, as a product line. Um, and that became very successful at the lower price point models to give a great value for yeah, young yeah. students to play. Then as I was doing more work and more work with Drum Channel, that's where you know the internet is a good side and bad side, I think, for young drummers out there. Yeah. Um, the great thing is, everybody around the world is seeing every other culture at an yeah. early age. So it's not like you were in Cuba and you had to come to New York when you were 25 to see about jazz and then try yeah, and yeah. figure out how. They're growing up with that wherever yeah. they're at. So there's a huge cross connection between all different cultures, specifically Latin and American music. Yeah. Uh, and as you well know, and that's where, why wouldn't an acoustic drum company have a major, you know, company that makes Latin percussion instruments. Yeah, LP. And, and LP, yeah. And I started it, we blazed that trail with gun bops uh, back in 2007, 2008, yeah. which is when your last guest said he wanted to get into Latin percussion, so yeah. we, we sold it to him because it, <laughs> it was a great combination for him. Uh, and the economy was having a hard time. We hadn't got it up and running yet, so we, we took everything that we had positioned, and he's yeah. done a great job with it. And then uh, the opportunity to actually buy Latin percussion for Latin percussion yeah. uh, was, again, my son blazed that trail for almost two years. It's a, almost a full-time job to make it happen. So one of the things I, I have to say, I'm a big fan that when you, you've, you, you've acquired a few different companies. Yeah. Um, you let each of these companies keep their soul instead of some companies will bring it in the fold and it automatically becomes just another name of that same company. Well, there's a big difference there, I think. Yeah. All those companies 
had names associated with them. There's yeah. people who started. There was a Rogers, a Slingerland, a Ludwig. Yeah. These were these were real people. Uh, and Gretsch, of course. Yes. Uh, and Martin Cohen with LP. Um, and they were in business, as I mentioned, to, to create musical instruments. When those companies, when the industry got really big, the Beatles landed, Ludwig was going 24 hours a day, um, all the other companies sold to bigger corporations. Yeah. If, if I'm stating this correctly, I think you know what I'm saying, they started creating products as opposed to musical instruments. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's when you're looking at how do you compete on price, how do you compete on, uh, on market share, how do you market your products, as opposed to, I approach everything, brands that we yeah. have, as if it's going out there with somebody's name on it that we know. Yeah. So I wouldn't want, you're a friend. Yeah. Uh, you want me to make you a pedal, I wouldn't want to give you a pedal, but I'm thinking like... It's just like, a product. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and consumers, I don't want them to walk out of a store uh, saying, and, and you don't really hear this, hey, I, I got a great deal on a DW drum. I want them to say, hey, I got DW, check yeah. it out, you know. This it's is the most awesome piece the, of the gear that I The exciting thing is that yeah. you got a great price. The exciting thing is that you got a great quality instrument. Exactly, uh, exactly. And growing up, there was a big heritage of Gretsch in my life. Uh, big heritage of Slingerland, which is a new brand that we yeah. just acquired in my life. So, so we're gonna we're gonna keep the family vibe of those companies. That's that's the main thing to me. Make yeah. a musical instrument. Make something that musicians are excited to play. Yeah, and that is that is definitely the case. One last question. All these people who are attending, the gear companies, the buyers, the musicians who are here, um, what one thought do you want them to know about DW and the Drum Channel? I know those are two separate brands, right. but they work you know, synchronistically because the Drum Channel powers people in learning and the people come and then use the gear. So what, what's that thought that you'd like them to, to know? I think you, you kind of said education. Education. Uh, it's education in terms of teaching somebody how to play, which is going to improve the quality of their life. Educating them on what you've produced as yeah. an instrument so that they can see how it functions with their life. Uh, if the sound of a drum set when you sit behind it inspires you to play, I couldn't go home a happier person yeah. when, I, when I hear that. That's good. Uh, when I, and I love teaching. I started teaching when I was 16 years old. Uh, I was teaching 40, 50 students a week for almost 20 years. Do you carry any students? At, at, I know you don't have time. I, but I don't have time, but actually it's interesting. And, and on my bucket list, I'm edging my way back into that. And there'll That's be some, awesome. some fun things that we have coming up on Drum Channel. One. Drumchannel.com, folks. Yeah. You've got to yeah. tune in. It's amazing, amazing stuff for drummers. But not just drummers. For anybody who wants to understand rhythm and groove. Yeah, and, and, and any instrument yeah. they would play, right. Um, we do have a, a huge list of upper, they're, they're almost university courses for people that are really practicing, drummers out there that have time to, 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 to look at how they want to take their, if they're looking at it from a career standpoint, yeah. or if you're just a hobbyist, you can get in and, and learn how to do it also. Um, but the, the, I think education as a, as a, as a global term whether you're inspiring somebody by making a great musical instrument for them or you're teaching them how to play, when that student lights up, you've taught, yeah, and yeah. he gets it, you know, can't be better. And one of the things that we're going to be doing on my bucket list, don't tell anybody, but <laughs> for years, I stayed with Freddie Gruber for almost five years, you know. Uh, I was a student of Freddie's when he first started teaching when he came to yeah. LA. So I'm documenting with all of the things and all of the videos that I've got between me and, and Freddie, um, what we'd spend our, our days and hours talking about was Buddy Rich's technique. So we're going to be putting out a series of me wow. hosting what Freddie told me about Buddy's technique. So we would look at it, we would see it, and it's going to be quite, quite interesting. So, that, so I'm, getting into, teaching be beastly, a, I'm sure. getting into teaching a little bit because I'm going through it with yeah. some players and they, they really dig it. So that'll, that'll, be, that'll be something that will be happening this year on Drum Channel. Well, amazing. Thank you very much, Don, for Thank you. being with us. Don Lombardi, everybody, DW chairman, founder, as well as just driving the education with the Drum Channel. Make sure you go there. Make sure you go to both. Uh, my name is Florentino, the CEO of EnterTalk Media, as well as the host of The Changing Stage. Yes. And this has been a big picture moment here at NAM 2020. Thank you. Signing out. Thank you, Don. This is the host with the most. Nobody <laughs> has more syllables in his name than this guy. He's the guy. And this might be the full name. Hey, uh, thank Man you. Manuel Florentino Buenaventura, Jr. The third. I lost track altogether. I, I did. Check him out more. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.